Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Inspiration 4 returns home, also Earhart crash site and debris field allegedly found in 1938 photograph, and Selena's preps for national aerobatic championships. Happy Monday, thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. We have a packed episode, so let's go ahead and start with Inspiration 4 returns home. The return marks the completion of the world's first all-civilian human space flight to orbit. After launching from historic Launch Complex 39A at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida on Wednesday, September 15th, and three days orbiting Earth, the astronauts of Inspiration 4 flying aboard SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft safely splashed down in the Atlantic Ocean off the coast of the Kennedy Space Center at around 7.06 p.m. Dragon performed a series of departure phasing burns to leave the circular orbit at 575 kilometers and then jetty zoned its trunk ahead of its deorbit burn. After re-entering the Earth's atmosphere, the spacecraft deployed its two drogue and four main parachutes in preparation for the soft water landing. Upon splashdown, the Inspiration4 astronauts were welcomed home by the SpaceX team and quickly brought on board the recovery vessel. SpaceX transported Dragon back to Cape Canaveral for inspections and refurbishment ahead of future human spaceflight missions. Finally, true to the mission's name and purpose, Inspiration4 raised over $200 million and counting for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, boosted by the Friday promise of another $50 million by SpaceX's Elon Musk. After the break, Phoenix Police Department plans to upgrade fleet. More news after these messages. Skyleader Aircraft offers a lineup of the most powerful, durable, and efficient light sport aircraft in the industry. From trainers to roomy cockpits for long hauls, Skyleader has an aircraft for you. And the best part? They're in your budget. Skyleader's base prices are set low to give you room to customize your aircraft to your needs, desires, and wallet allowing you to put your money where it matters to you most. Visit FlySkyLeader.com today to learn about our aircraft, customization options, and chat with the team. When adventure is calling, the Bori by Aero Volga is the plane you need to answer the call. Bori's composite design is simple, reliable, and economical with impressive performance and no gimmicks. Designed for the wilderness and proven durability in a flight around the Arctic Circle, the Bori has what it takes to handle your next adventure. Featuring two large cargo compartments, a comfortable modern cockpit, and a Rotax 912 power plant, the Bori Amphibian is now available in Canada. Experience the Bori for yourself at FlightSimple.com. Are you ready to ace your FAA drone pilot knowledge test, get your remote pilot certificate, and start earning money? Well, flying a drone is a great tool that can open up new business opportunities for anyone. Realtor, insurance adjuster, videographer, or commercial weekend drone warrior, you need to fly legally. Whether you're pursuing your initial Part 107 remote pilot certificate, or you need a renewal, King Schools has a course just for you. So start learning today at kingschools.com. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're going to be summarizing some other interesting news in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. So, Phoenix Police Department reveals plans to upgrade its helicopter fleet with five new H-125 helicopters. Next year, deliveries are expected to begin. The helicopter is well known for its high performance in hot and high conditions. Built at Airbus Helicopters in Columbus, Mississippi, the team is composed of 40% veterans. The H-125 accounts for nearly half of all intermediate single-engine helicopters delivered for airborne law enforcement missions in North America over the last decade. EAA Ultralight Light Sport Aircraft Council names chairman. Jim Farr of Germantown, Wisconsin, has been named the chairman of the EAA's Ultra Light and Light Sport Aircraft Council. The council that provides essential background and guidance to EAA on ultra light and light sport aircraft matters. He is an Air Force veteran that also pursued ultra light flying while enlisted. After his retirement in 2011, with the rank of lieutenant colonel, he earned his sport pilot certification and began service as the president and vice president of the EAA Ultralight Chapter 1 in the Milwaukee area. The Red Tail Flight Academy celebrated its opening at Stewart International Airport, honoring the legacy of the Tuskegee Airmen. 
The Red Tail Flight Academy will train seven aspiring black aviators from inadequately serviced communities. To strengthen the foundation of the academy, original documented Tuskegee Airmen Lieutenant Colonel Enoch Woodhouse will attend the opening to welcome the inaugural cadets, including three females and four males. The academy strives to increase the percentage of non-Caucasian aviators from less than 2.5% represented in the military and the commercial space to at least 4% in the next 10 years. Wyoming Aviation Hall of Fame announces 2021 inductee. The Wyoming Aviation Hall of Fame congratulates Bob Hawkins, who has been selected as its inductee for 2021. Hawkins has been operating many types of fixed-wing aircraft and helicopters across Wyoming and the West for more than 50 years. He excelled in specialized applications including high-altitude mountain flying, heavy lift hauling, firefighting, long line surveying, and wildlife management. Well, that does it for today's trip around the patch. Now, as we turn to the rest of the news, okay, please take this with a grain of salt. But new information has allegedly been unearthed concerning the mystery surrounding Amelia Earhart's crash site, thanks to analyzing a 1938 photograph. Michael Ashmore of RoadToAmelia.org described the photograph. The body of this December 1938 photograph shows possible remains of an impact scar, starting at the beach and running approximately 20 to 40 yards into the vegetation, suggesting Amelia's angle of approach during ditching and ultimately leads the way to a debris field of previously unseen wreckage within the photo. The debris is seen as shapes piled up in a heap and being semi-camouflaged under a canopy of trees and shrubs, having either a missing or caved in nose door and would account for the shadow so prominent in the Terraria object image. Also visible is the appearance of more buckled metal forward of the cockpit as it caused by a sudden stop. Having sustained ample damage, though unknown to what degree, speculating more clues are hidden under vegetation in this debris field and may show telltale signs of the last moments of her electrus flight. After these messages, Salina preps for National Aerobatic Championships. More news after the break. At Diamond Aircraft, innovation is in our DNA. Whether you're taking to the skies for training or business travel, every aircraft in Diamond's lineup features innovative technology, an industry-leading safety record, superior performance and efficiency, and a comfortable flying experience. No other company has pioneered as many aviation firsts, achieved more milestones, or received the same amount of industry praise as Diamond. Discover why Diamond Aircraft is one of the most trusted manufacturers in aviation at diamondaircraft.com. If it looks good, it usually flies good. The Bristel series of aircraft is proof of that. Furthering their legacy of safety and efficiency, Bristel is proud to feature the Rotax 915 IS Turbo in the current lineup of aircraft. The 915 IS Turbo power plant offers more power than ever before in a light sport aircraft. Learn more about Bristel at www.sportflyingusa.com. Aviation Safety Resources is disrupting the market for aircraft emergency parachute recovery systems. ASR systems are smaller, lighter weight, and offer longer repack cycles than similar products available in the current market. ASR has a recovery system available for every type of aircraft. Sport, experimental, light sport, general aviation, urban air mobility, vertical takeoff and landing, electric propulsion, and unmanned aerial systems. Find the right product for your aircraft at AviationSafetyResources.com. Welcome back. The U.S. National Aerobatic Championships are taking place this week through September 24th. Over 100 pilots are expected to arrive at the Salina Regional Airport to compete. Salina was selected as the event location after being selected from over 40 airports across the Midwest. The 2020 championships were canceled, but they are back this year. We hope this is a second of many visits to Salina, said Doug. Bartlett, Contest Director of Naples, Florida. The event is organized by a volunteer team made up of members from the International Aerobatic Club, headquartered in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. 85 airplanes are expected to land at Salinas Airport this weekend for the contest. There will be five categories, primary, sportsman, intermediate, advanced, and unlimited in both power and glider. The competition holds both compulsory and freestyle aerobatic sequences. Included are collegiate competitors from three universities, University of North Dakota in Grand Forks, 
the United States Air Force Academy from Colorado Springs, and Metropolitan State University of Denver. Upon completion of the competition, the winner of the Unlimited Power Division will be named the National Aerobatic Champion. That does it for our show today. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. You can catch episodes of Airborne on Roku and Fire TV. Just search for Air News or Airborne in the directory. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.